In this video, I'm going to very quickly show you how to get every permanent follower in Oblivion. We're going to cover all six of the permanent followers available in game. All other followers are either temporary during a quest, single use and don't respawn, or they're actually summoning spells rather than actual followers, and therefore they're not listed in this video. The base game includes three different types of follower. Firstly, you have the Dark Brotherhood Murderers, who can be recruited to follow you once you've completed the Honor Thy Mother quest. This is actually the final quest in the Dark Brotherhood quest chain, and honestly this is one of the best and most fun storylines in the game, so it's worth doing even if you don't want the follower. To start the quest chain, you basically have to kill any innocent NPC in the game. If you want to be sure that you're not killing an NPC that's involved in another quest, then head to the Bravil Skooma Den and target one of the NPCs in there. Or, for added satisfaction, you may want to follow the time-honoured tradition of creatively murdering the third follower that I'm going to introduce you to in this video. If you know, you definitely know. <laughs> anyway, once you've completed the quest chain, you'll be able to recruit either an assassin, mage or archer to fight alongside you from the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary. All you need to do is approach them and simply ask them to follow you. The Mage Apprentice follower is acquired through very similar means. You have to complete a quest called Confront the King at the end of the Mage's Guild quest chain. Much like the Dark Brotherhood, it's another fun quest line that's worth your time regardless of the ability to gain an additional follower. To join the Mage's Guild, you're going to need to gain a recommendation from each of the Mage's Guild Halls. These halls can be found in the cities of Anvil, Bravil, Bruma, Shadenhull, Coral, Leowin, and Skingrad. So basically all of the major cities outside of the Imperial City. You need to go and speak to the guild hall leaders in each of these cities and they're going to offer you a recommendation after you've completed a task for them. Once you have all eight recommendations you can join the Mages Guild at the Arcane University in the Imperial City and there you can continue the quest chain. Once you've completed the full quest line you can recruit Mage Apprentices at the Arcane University and as a bonus tip you can actually get two Mage Apprentices to follow you. To do this you're going to need to make sure that you recruit the black-haired Breton female first. For some reason, presumably a bug, you're still able to ask a second apprentice to follow you whilst she's already following you. Anyway, moving on to the third follower in the base game, and this one needs no introduction. He has achieved godlike meme status over the many years since Oblivion was released, and he might just be the most simultaneously loved and hated NPC in video game history. He is of course, the adoring fan. You can gain him as a follower by completing the arena quest chain, which is actually really simple, you just need to travel to the arena in the Imperial City, you need to go down into the Bloodworks and speak to Owen, and then you just need to win all of your matches to become the Grand Champion, and for doing so you'll gain the Adoring Fan as your loyal follower. And by Azura is he useless. He's annoying in the extreme, and he also runs away during combat. On the plus side, you can find lots of different creative ways to murder him, though I will warn you, he does respawn. Moving on to the free followers that you gain through DLC. Firstly, we have the Knights of the Nine, who can be recruited to follow you after you complete the Knights of the Nine quest chain. This quest chain can be started by travelling to Anvil and speaking to the seemingly crazy prophet who can be found across the road from the chapel. He'll set you off on a long and again very enjoyable quest chain that serves as the main content of the Knights of the Nine DLC. Once you complete it, you'll be able to ask any of the named knights at the Priory of the Nine to follow you. If the original knights die in combat, they'll be replaced by generic knights. Though it is best to try and preserve the named knights because the generic ones that respawn in their place are actually weaker. If you have the Mage Tower DLC, you'll be able to summon creatures of Flame, Frost and Storm known as Atronax. To access the ability to summon Atronax, you simply need to follow the quest that you'll receive after leaving the sewers, and that quest is going to tell you to travel to Frostcrag Spire. You then need to access the spire in order to claim it, and once you do, you'll be able to use the altar in the main room on the first floor to summon Atronax to fight alongside you. You're going to need three of either Fire, Frost or Void Salts to perform the summoning ritual, and that depends on which element you want your follower to be attuned to. Again, the options are Fire, Frost and Storm. It's actually a very similar story with the Fighter's Stronghold DLC. Once you've claimed the Fighter's Stronghold, which basically involves gaining a quest when you leave the sewers, travelling to the castle, defeating the attackers besieging it and then speaking to the guard to claim the castle. However, you will then need to visit the Market District in the Imperial City to speak to Nilfas Armalian. He sells an item called Battlehorn Barracks Upgrade. 
This will place some new NPCs in your castle, specifically a guy called Castellan Afon and two of his men at arms, who will then be found patrolling the castle and you simply need to go up to them and speak to them if you want to recruit them as your follower. And that's all of them. Hopefully you found the video useful. I have a bunch of other Oblivion guides on my channel, so if you're interested, maybe consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.